Hey there, welcome to another lesson and uh, in this lesson we'll continue the work on our terrarium project and also introduce knowledge on how to work with CSS or as it's also known cascading style sheets. You can follow along if you want, you can go to Web Dev for Beginners, the terrarium project is what we're working on, lesson 2 is what we're doing. If you haven't completed lesson 1 I definitely recommend having a look at that. This is where we set up our HTML. As I said we are on lesson two which means we got our html in place already so what we're going to do is to have a look through these instructions and we see that the first thing we need to create is a style css so that's what we're doing next inside of your project now we can create style css now it's completely empty but we will give it content soon the next order of business is to ensure that the index html is using it we can do that via a link tag so let's grab the link tag here from the site and the important part is to place this within the head element. So this is a child to the head element. As you can see, what we're doing is to say rel style sheet. This is just to say it's a style sheet. href, this is the important part. This is where you're pointing out where on your machine is this style CSS. So we're saying it's exactly in the same directory, that hence the dot. And then we're saying style CSS, which is this file. Now we're gonna do a thing that you can do. This is not a recommended practice, but this is something that you can do to add styling. What we're doing here is to add a style attribute. This is the last thing that your HTML file and your uh, HTML renderer is gonna look at. It's this tag, this attribute uh, that says style color equals red. Now color denotes the color of your font. Were we to look at this in code swing, we can see how this header is completely red. As I said, this is a way of doing styles. This is not something we recommend. We do recommend you to move all such styling into a separate file. So that's up next. To uh, mimic this, to move this away from uh, here into a separate file, we can add the corresponding styling here. Uh, one good thing to know is that in CSS you've got different ways of identifying an element and then applying the style. In this case, because we are using the name of the element, this is, will target every single element out there that's been called H1. So if you give it like so, you're saying I'm looking for elements with this name and please apply the color blue to it. Let's see what happens. You will see something called precedence, which means which rule applies last. And you can see that the rule being applied last is the one that happens here. And the rule that happens here is applied second to last, which is why you don't see the effect. However, were we to remove this, you see that it's now blue and it's blue thanks to style CSS. If we make this red instead and this one blue, you see again how the styling is being applied last when uh, it's looking at the style tag. I don't recommend keeping this. I'm going to remove this for now and we're going to be relying in the future on anything that happens in style CSS and per the instruction that should be blue too. Right, so now everything is blue and is blue thanks to what's happening in the CSS. We will keep working with our style CSS file. The next thing we're going to do is target the body element and we're going to set a specific font. Hide this meanwhile. So working on the body element, this is about us identifying the body element. If you remember, the body element is where everything that you can visually see is being placed, you know, like your images, your title, your other text. We are setting a font family. Good to know that is this is being read from left to right, which means it will try to find and apply the font Helvetica first. If it can't find it, it will go on with Arial. If it can't find Arial, then default to a font that is of type sans serif. Just a reminder again that the body tag is here, which means that everything we're doing right now will apply in a cascading manner, which means that every single element under the body tag will inherit this. This is part of the C in CSS, the cascading part, which means that all of my children will inherit all my properties. If I got blue eyes, all of my children will have blue eyes unless there's something else that interferes with that process. Let's keep working a little bit on our styles. This time we'll grab something from the web page. We added a property here called text align center which means we get a center text but uh, it's good to know that this is not usually how we style things with meaning that you're not so likely to target specific elements but there are rather groups of elements or even targeting something called an element class. More about that shortly. Let's add some more styling. So far, you just saw the name of the element, right? Uh, but now we're adding this hash. So by adding this hash in front of a name, 
what we're saying is where we're trying to find an element with an ID property called left container or an ID property called right container. So this specific hash says I'm instead of targeting the name of the element, I am targeting the ID. So I'm looking for an element with an ID property with the name left container and if you remember the CSS, also right container. Looking at the style being applied here, we see that we do various things. Also note that for every single attribute that we try to style on this element, we uh, separate it by a semicolon. So background color, key value, key, uh, semicolon, key value, semicolon and so on. So don't forget the semicolon or it won't work. Now you can already see, make it this a little bit bigger, how our website is starting to look better. Right now you see that the images are actually in columns. You see how things are, are being divided up. We have uh, one thing we did here is to set the width to 15%. We set the position to absolute. So this is right for the container. So when you set the absolute position for a container, what you're saying is, on this specific pixel, this is where I want you to exist. So top left means that the left container is like it's glued to the top left of the web page. And if you look at this one, you see that it also uses a position absolute. And this one is also glued, but instead it is being positioned in the top right position. So this is a way, if you've got really big containers, you want them to be in a specific place in the page, this is a way that you can do things. There are also such things that I'm not going to go through today, such as grid and flexbox. This is a different way of placing uh, containers and elements. Definitely look up uh, flexbox and, and grid if you're interested in styling. Let's add this. Now we're adding a, another type of styling, namely using the dot. And uh, so far you've seen how we targeted element by name, element by ID, but this time around, we are targeting elements by class, and the class identifier is, is the dot here. So dot plant holder or dot plant, this means that we have classes that are called this way. So if we look at the index HTML, let's try to see if we find class attributes that's called container. Okay, we are looking for class plant holder or class plant, which means we are targeting element called plant holder and plant, which means the div will be targeted for uh, plant holders, every single div like this. So this will target a whole list of, of elements with, that all share the property that they all have a class called plant holder. And the other CSS class that we were using was called plant, right? Which means we are targeting every single image that has this class plant. So this is uh, CSS is really about identifying the elements that I'm interested in and then apply the proper styling. But with CSS, you have to realize that there is this cascading mechanism. So for example, if I'm applying a certain styling to my body, know that every single element will inherit this property, unless of course, a child element is saying, no, I don't want Helvetica, I want Times New Roman instead, or Wingdings or whatever font style. The point is, you can always override what's been applied to you, but know that you are in the context of being inherited and you are inheriting from the body tag or some kind of parent tag. Let's add some more styling here. And uh, the big takeaway from what we just did was we got rounded corners and what happened? Well, if you do a border radius like this, you will create a rounded corner. We can always add this value a little bit more if we want to. You can see how the change happened here. You can add even more just to exaggerate the effects a little bit, but it was a bit too much. The point is, if you don't want these sharp edges in the corners, you can use border radius. REM is a different system. You could be using pixels instead if you wanted to, if you wanted to do five or 20 or so on. So I'm not gonna cover all of that today, but there are definitely different systems for applying a certain value. Let's uh, recap everything we did today, right? Because there was quite a lot. We talked about uh, styling. So let's let's start by how we started with some inline styling here in the H1. We used the style attribute. That's not a recommendation, but good for you to know is that sometimes you need to add that. It's very seldom. You should really motivate why you would add it. 
but know this that this is the last thing to be applied to your element so this will override whatever happened you know before but the recommended practice is to have a link to a style sheet file like this with the href and in this case we're pointing to style CSS. another thing we went through today is how to identify elements that we want to apply a style to so identifying by name like this or identify via the ID property or lastly identify via a class property or class attribute then we need to use the dot instead of the hash and yeah we looked at various ways to do positioning today position absolute means that we are literally pointing to a specific pixel on our screen we also looked at border radius and this is a great way of making sure we get nice looking borders um, so it gives this softer look to our design so we have a terrarium today we got various things in this terrarium that's great starting to look really nicely right you can just imagine yourself parking in that lizard or whatever kind of nice animal that wants to move into this terrarium so thanks for watching see you in another video